Okay, now we're going to have a quick look at how to post-process your solution in PowerView. So we're assuming that we've run a test case, um, such as this one. This one's just run for 100 iterations. Um, see, there is 1.4 million cells in this case. Um, so that's going to take quite a while to finish running, but um, just for the sake of getting on with something quickly, um, it stopped at 100 iterations. So let's have a look at the convergence of that. And run this back trial, which basically just runs GNU plot. And that shows you um, what the residuals are doing. It shows you how the pressure wiggle is fluctuating, and it shows you your maximum velocity. So when it's converged, most of those should have flatlined. Um, so that's basically plotting what is written out to the conv.dat file during. Um, when the cell was running. Um, so if you're happy with the convergence, load the solution. Um, we've already got the geometry loaded in here for reference. Um, so we want to load the VTK file. That's loaded. Uh, first thing to do is just to double check that the uh, the mesh is the least in terms of the uh, live and dead regions. So you can see there that um, we've got red outside of the car, blue inside the car, which is good. So the mesh seems to valid in that sense. Um, so we've just got a cut plane up at the moment, halfway through the domain. So we can look at properties on there, we can look at the distance field. Um, you know, sometimes made the geometry out of it so you can still see it, but it doesn't. Getting way too much. Um, so yeah, we can see the distance field around the geometry there, and we can look at sample velocity. This is only run for 100 iterations, so it's not going to be um, that exciting. But um, we can look at the velocity contours on that cut plane. Um, Range a bit, do it. Do it between twenty and forty. Now, in the flow solution, there it's only just started, but we can see there's a little bit of checkering effect there, so that indicates that the smoothing. Uh, needs to be increased a little bit, although um, because the solution's only just started, um, it'll probably settle down after a while. But that's just uh, oscillations in the flow field. Now, if we want, if we want to have a look at the surface of the vehicle, um, there's two ways of doing that. We can go cell to point. Take a contour plot of the distance field, and then we can choose a property such as velocity and plot that on the surface of the car. And very quickly, you get a rough idea of what's going on with the velocity near the surface. 
and um, pressure, surface pressures. Plotted the wiggle, that gives you an idea where the solution is most unstable. Um, so if you've got a problem with convergence and you look for areas where the, there's pressure wiggles, then you can try to figure out causing a problem with the convergence. Um, the other, so that's one way um, by plotting the distance field, but the other way is to we sample the flow solution back onto the geometry. <clears throat> so you select the VTK file, we sample the data set, and then select the source as the F1 model. And then that will have interpolated the flow solution back onto the original SDL file. Um, Sometimes a better way to do it if your um, distance field surface is not very clean for whatever reason, then you can just resample the flow solution back onto your geometry and, uh, and look at it that way. The only problem with doing this is that sometimes the SDL file might be quite coarse, and if it's a lot coarser than the actual mesh that you've used, then um, it won't be very good because the extrapolation onto the triangles uh, won't be very won't be very accurate if the triangles are too large. And that's that. uh, the next thing we might want to do, we looked at slices. Slices through the domain. Look at um, surface properties and the surface of the geometry. And the other thing that um, we want to do is look at streamlines. Um, so do that. that you have selected the VTK file and select streamlines. A lot of streamlines there, so I want to do some of it. Change the radius a bit smaller. And we might want to position that somewhere a bit more interesting. So you can either move the point by hand. Or you can do it a bit more accurately by selecting these values here. So that down a little bit. And when you've got it, when you want it, you can change the number, green lines. Because this is only done 100 iterations, and there's not a great deal. Solution yet, but um, just for demonstration purposes, 